Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the halfway study session for performance. What I'm going to be doing today is basically answering some questions on a question bank covering all the stuff that we've looked at until this point. This feels like quite a good point to stop because naturally we've covered all the way through from takeoff to landing. So we've done a full flight's worth of performance and we're going to be looking at some questions covering all those phases of flight. And then in the upcoming videos, we're going to be looking more specifically at class A regulations, class B regulations, as well as tackling some of those dreaded graphs in the CAP 698 document. If you find this sort of stuff useful, actually seeing the knowledge applied to questions and how to maybe tackle questions, please let me know. I'll try to do more of them maybe in the next series or again, I could do them after looking at the class A stuff or the class B stuff just to sort of consolidate our knowledge before we go into the real exam. Hello and welcome to the halfway practice study session for performance. Um, I'm going to be using a question bank, answering questions, show you how I would tackle them. I've got a question bank which is the Airhead ATPL, they've given me access to it so I can show off some of the features um, and yeah, show you what it's all about really before you spend your money. So it's very simple, basic design. You've got practice, the home screen, searching questions, um, mock exams, your settings, but we are going to practice questions. So that's what we'll click on. We've got performance selected already. We're not doing all topics. We're just gonna do general because we're just about halfway through. I know this seems big, but um, the general section is a bit bigger, basically. So we can filter questions. Seen an exam, top quality ones, 100, 200, 300 of the last uploaded to the website. Uh, you can see ones that you've never seen, ones you've answered wrong, various settings to play around with, but we don't want to do 564 questions. Let's just do 15 or so. I think the exam's about 30 to 35 questions from memory. So 15's about half of them. Uh, let's get some instant gratification. Um, we do we want to go to the next question automatically if I answer correct? No, but we want to submit my answers automatically on selection. Yes, cool, let's start practicing. Um, I've also managed to hook my phone up. So if there's anything that I'm gonna scribble on a bit of rough paper, we should be able to see that there. So what is the ratio of nautical air miles of flying distance versus the amount of fuel consumed? So nautical air miles versus, I suppose, nautical ground miles. The amount of fuel consumed, so we're talking about a measure of efficiency, so it's either range or endurance. So it's not drag, it's not cost index. Or is it cost index? Because that's a sort of a ratio. Specific range is what comes into my head straight away because it's talking about nautical air miles and specific range is specific air range. So let's click on that. Yeah, uh, there's various things you can see. So I think this is see similar questions. Yeah, similar questions. Uh, you can like save it for later. You can type some notes in if you want. You can mark it as you've seen it in the exam. And my favorite bit of this website, you can see comments to other people. SR equals air distance, SGR, ground distance. Yeah, cool, scene, 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 scene. Uh, yeah, cool. So you get a little bit of feedback, which is quite good about this one, uh, this question bank. In a turn at a constant angle of bank, the rate of turn is proportional to, so I remember, this is more of sort of principles of flight stuff, but um, basically when you turn, it's not by the weight. So it's not proportional to the aircraft weight. It's not uh, the, constant, the rate of turn is gonna be faster if you're flying at a faster true airspeed because you're flying around the corner faster. Surely that's right. No, inversely proportional to the true airspeed. Let's have a look what people are saying. Turn radius, not the rate of turn. Inverse proportional aircraft true airspeed, constant angle of bank, constant angle of bank. The rate of turn is inversely before. Okay, so I'm not quite understanding that properly, but there you go. That's what you would do in these sort of situations. You'd figure out um, that's a weakness. 
So I need to learn a bit more about uh, turns, really, because it's not really something you deal with that much in performance. Uh, it's more sort of principles of flight stuff, and it's been a while since I did principles of flight uh, classes. So yeah, that's why. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's weakness that we can identify, work on. That's what these question packs are very good for. So in straight and level flight, constant indicate airspeed, which of the following will affect the amount of induced drag? A constant indicate airspeed. So headwind and tailwind, that's going to be to do with covering distances along the ground. So it's not really going to be our constant indicate airspeed, we're not going to change our indicate airspeed. The amount of induced drag, we basically, the heavier we are, the more drag we produce. So, because we need more lift. So right, let's uh, show you on a bit of paper what I'm talking about. Uh, there we go. So, the lift equation, rho v squared scl. If we're heavier, we need more lift. If we're keeping our indicated airspeed the same, then we need to produce... Um, Sorry, it doesn't really matter about the indicated airspeed in this case, because if we are needing more lift, then we have more induced drag as a result. Heavier aircraft needs more lift to take it off, and more lift makes more induced drag. A headwind during the climb will result in an increased ground distance to climb, increased fuel to climb, no change in the flight path angle, no change in the time to climb. So if we think about our um, climb equations, so we know that the angle of climb is, uh, what is it? So it's the, yeah, sorry. So the angle of climb is equal to the excess thrust basically over the weight and the rate would be the excess power. So the rate of climb is excess power, which is thrust times the true airspeed minus drag times the true airspeed over the weight. So let's have a look at these two equations and the answers and see if we can work anything out. So in a headwind, so headwind affects our ground speed. So ground speed isn't involved in any of these things. So I don't think it's gonna do anything to the time. I don't think it's gonna do anything to the angle. Increased ground distance, maybe, although I doubt it because a headwind, no, it wouldn't make sense. Because if we're climbing at this specific angle, if we've got a headwind, it's gonna push our pocket of air backwards. So our flight path angle, which is what it's kind of referring to, would actually be lower. No change to the flight path angle, that's wrong. An increased ground distance climb, that's wrong. No change to the time to climb, that's wrong. So it must be increased fuel to climb because we're having to counteract any wind to maintain the same true airspeed. No, no change to the time. Oh, I bloody said that as well. <laughs> I said it's not gonna affect the time to climb because it's, uh, ah, that's a stupid mistake. Oh well. Um, so basically what we're saying here is don't be an idiot. Look at the question, take your time. Um, but what it's saying is that the, basically headwind and tailwind are horizontal and the time to climb, the rate of climb is a vertical thing. So the horizontal is not gonna affect that vertical. Which statement about a clear weight is correct? So the clear weight is part of the ASDA. No, that's the stop weight would be part of that. Minimum clear weight gradient is 1.5. Minimum semi width is 90 meters. Uh, no, it's 70 meters. The airport authority has control over the clearway. So, what's the gradient? Um, so, the gradient I think is 1.25. So, I'm going to say the airport authority has control over the clearway. Yeah. I mean, the airport authority's got to have control over what it controls, you know? That makes any sense at all. Kind of babbling. What will increase the field length limiting landing mass when operating with the anti-skid in orbit? So increase 
the field length limiting mass. So basically, to take more mass, so it's, it's kind of strange because the mass and the distance are sort of the opposites. So if we want to increase the field length limiting mass, it means we can land in less distance. Because, and if we can land in less distance, we can therefore take more mass and stretch our distance back out to the maximum distance available, for example. So if the anti-skid is inoperative and we're wanting to increase our mass, that means we're wanting to reduce the distance. Hopefully that makes sense. So a headwind will increase the field length limiting landing mass. A downslope will not help because it'll pull us down the slope. An increase in the pressure altitude will mean the density altitude is, so the density is less. And that means we're going to have to fly faster on our speeds are a bit strange. Contaminated runway means we don't get the grip. So a headwind means we have a less distance, AKA more mass. Yes. The optimum speed for specific range on a propeller driven aircraft is minimum stall speed, lift to drag ratio, drag speed, power. Okay. So, uh, Max range speed in a propeller is VMD from memory. Yeah, explanation just so I didn't really explain that one. So max range propeller aircraft is the tangent to the power required curve, which in still air just happens to be VMD. This is also the speed for the maximum lift to drag ratio, but not minimum. So it would be maximum lift to drag ratio speed. Cool. Next. On the power required, power available graph, you can see the speed for best range. Um, what's it talking about? So we just did this. So VMD, the tangent of the origin. So that's not really good because it doesn't say if it's a jet or a um, propeller. But by drawing a tangent to the point of origin up to the power required curve, power required, yes. And down to the power of... So this is not the question we just had. By drawing a tangent from the point of origin up to the power required curve, which equals VMD, 1.32 VMD. Yeah, there you go, that's quite useful. So sometimes that will just happen. You'll get two questions that are very closely related. And even if they're not next to each other, a good tip for the exam is if you've got time at the end, go and look through, only if you've got time at the end, obviously, but look through and see if there's any sort of matching questions, ones that have clues within them for the other ones. And hopefully the story makes sense and they're all matching and things make sense. So the aerodynamic ceiling is the altitude at which speeds for low speed and for high speed buffer are the same. The altitude at which the airplane reaches 50 feet per minute. Uh, nope. Depends on thrust setting and is increase with increasing thrust is the altitude at which the best rate of climb theoretically is zero. So you've got the aerodynamic ceiling, you've got the service ceiling, and you've got the absolute ceiling. So the absolute ceiling would be this, altitude with the best rate of climb. So, um, speed, the same as this, this is cough and corner, isn't it? Yeah. Again, that's sort of principles of flight stuff, but principles of flight and uh, performance are very closely related, so that'll be why these kind of questions are in here. What is the approximate value for VMD for a jet relative to the stall speed in an aircraft clean? Oh my God, what is this? All right, we can, we can work this out. We can work this out. So, um, can we work it out? When in doubt, draw the effing picture. So, we've got our speed, and our drag curve. This is our drag curve here. And that would be our uh, drag upside. And this is speed this way. So drag curve. So VMD is here. And the stall speed would be where? Hmm. When we can no longer fly because we're stalling, we'd be about there. Does that make sense? Drag's too much. 
one point. That's like almost double. That doesn't make any sense. 1.32 VS sounds suspiciously close to the relationship between VMP and VMD. So that doesn't make sense. So does that. That's way too close. So I'm going to go for either 1.7 or 1.6. And I think it's about 1.6. Wow. That's lucky. Explanation. See diagram. Okay, so hopefully you can see that diagram if I get rid of my phone screen. So drag, VS is down there. Oh, it's so in reality, your drag curve should be a bit further over. 1.6 VS is, all oh, right, the zero speed, yeah, okay. There you go. I've learned something new today, 1.6 VS is VMD. Whilst maintaining a constant truer speed in the descent, how does extending the flap affect rate of descent and descent angle? Okay, so let's get our descent equations out. So uh, sine theta equals the excess drag. So drag minus thrust over weight and the uh, rate of descent, you would take that and multiply it by the true speed. So it's basically excess power required. Um, oh, I've not even shown that. There we go. Right, so which of these whilst maintaining constant true speed? So true speed remains constant. How does extending the flaps affect rate of descent and descent angle? So let's attack descent angle first. So extending the flaps means that our drag increases. That means we're going to have more excess drag, which means our steeper descent angle. So option one is going to be it increases our descent angle. Rate of descent. And our if we're multiplying by the same true speed, but we're increasing drag, that means we've still got more drag, which means we're going to increase our rate of descent as well. So they both increase. Increase, increase. Yeah, explanation. It'd be unusual to descend at constant tax. Yeah, that's why it's kind of messing with my brain. This is the rate of Excess power available only. Yeah, okay, so excess power. Cool. Get this again. So the maximum indicated airspeed of a piston engine, piston engine, airplane without turbocharger in level flight is reached. Piston engine airplane, so it's going to be quite low altitude. And I'm trying to figure out why that's the reason, but that's me just using my intuition because you lose power when you get up higher. The maximum indicated airspeed, regardless of type, will be achieved at the lowest possible altitude where density is at a maximum. This gives the greatest amount of power and the instrument reads the dynamic pressure. We're all, oh, so yeah, the dynamic pressure with the density. Mm, yeah, I don't rate that question. Bruh, yeah, exactly. Even with the supercharged max speed at the lowest, no charger, it's not high. Memorize maximum speed for a piston without turbocharger. Just memorize, that's not really great, but yeah, okay. Uh, the angle of climb with flaps extended compared to that with flaps retracted will normally be. So let's just get a climb equation written down. So it's the excess uh, thrust, thrust mass drag, overweight. Um, so the angle of climb with flaps extended, so drag goes up, which means we have less excess thrust, which means we're going to have a smaller climb angle. Uh, increase moderate flap saying to so I think it's just going to be smaller. Yeah. Flaps extended, increase power as a drag, which decreases the excess thrust. That's exactly what I've written down. Oh, you can't even see it. Uh, yeah, flaps extended increases parasite drag, which decreases the excess thrust. Yeah, when in doubt, draw out, write an equation. 
see what happens by manipulating the values. So in a level in level flight at given speed, how is drag effective affected if aircraft's mass increases? So if we increase mass, we need more lift. If we need more lift, we're generating more induced drag. We're inducing more lift. So drag affected if aircraft's mass increases, we will also increase our drag. Next one. Assuming all other factors remain unchanged, how will an increased mass affect the speed for best angle of descent and the speed for the best rate of descent? So basically, you could mess around with graphs and manipulate everything, but if you have an increased mass, that means that you have to fly faster because you have to generate more lift if everything else remains unchanged, which it is. So if you're increasing your mass, you have to fly faster. So all speeds will increase. Your stall speed, your speed for VX, your speed for VY, speed for best angle of descent, speed for best rate of descent, they both increase. So increases and the speed for best rate both increase. Simple as that. There you go, 87%, not bad. There were a couple things that got wrong. See all questions answered, let's have a little look. So there was that one about the turns. That was a point that I didn't really didn't really understand, to be honest, but um, we'll have a look at that before the exam. And a headwind during the climb, that was a stupid mistake. That's a, another lesson, just take your time, be slow and methodical with it. And yeah, that's it really. Go finish the exam. So that's what we did. It only took us about 50 minutes, which is quite quite good pace for this sort of exam. Um, because the, um, the graph ones are obviously gonna take you a bit longer. So if you can get these ones down to maybe like a minute per question, that sort of rate, then it gives you plenty of time to work on the uh, ones that take more time, like the graph ones, which we'll be moving on to next. Uh, we'll break it down into class A, class B regulations. I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna do it because there's so many graphs, but the CAP 698 document has little explanations of the graphs. So I might not go into full, full detail, maybe just explain a few of them and hopefully your intuition can work out some of the other ones. Maybe the ones that I see by doing another practice exam like this, I'll do, um, I'll go through and get some values for. That's it. Thank you for watching and leave a comment down below if you found this useful and tell me if you want one after class A performance and class B performance as well. And then of course we'll do a live stream at the end explaining everything live and uh, make some mistakes but doing it now is good, doing an exam, not as good. So we want to do them now and we can learn. Cool, thank you and good night.